Around 40,000 years ago, a small band of modern humans replaced the Neanderthals in Western Europe. Those hardy individuals are now known as Cro-Magnons. The wealth of archaeological data left behind by the Cro-Magnons has made it possible for us to learn more about their way of life than about any other group of modern humans living at the same period. Modern research suggests that Cro-Magnons appeared possibly as early as 45,000 years ago and were the tallest and largest brained humans that ever walked the earth. Males may have stood six feet tall on average with a brain capacity of over 1,700 cubic centimetres. Some may have had blue eyes, as the genes for blue eye colour has been found in Cro-Magnon skeletons from Italy, dating to over 20,000 years ago. The Cro-Magnons were members of our own species, Homo sapiens, but it is hard to say precisely where Cro-Magnons belong in human evolution, and it is difficult to determine how long the Cro-Magnons lasted and what exactly happened to them. Presumably, they were gradually absorbed into the European populations that came later. Current genetic studies suggest that modern humans stayed in South Asia, somewhere around the Persian Gulf, for around 30,000 years before advancing further north into Eurasia. This occurred around 80,000 to 50,000 years ago, according to genetic evidence, and this event is known as the Arabian Standstill. Cro-Magnons were robustly built and powerful, and the body was generally heavy and solid, apparently with strong musculature. They could run faster and throw with more power accuracy compared to earlier human species. It is estimated that Cro-Magnons were probably tall compared with other early human species. 40,000 years ago, Cro-Magnon males averaged 183 centimetres, about six feet tall. The forehead was straight, with slight brow ridges, and the face short and wide. Cro-Magnons were the first humans, genus Homo, to have a prominent chin. These hunter-gatherers lived a physically demanding lifestyle that would have required greater body strength than the average human today. Their recent ancestry may have also affected their height, as tall, long-limbed builds are useful adaptations to a warmer subtropical climate such as South Asia. According to the Out of Africa theory, our Homo sapiens ancestors are the pinnacle of human evolution and represent a superhuman race that developed over several hundred thousand years as our brains grew larger and more complex. The fact that large brains are a good indicator of intelligence is not exactly breaking news, but we can learn from Neanderthals that bigger isn't always better when it comes to brain size. Although the brains of modern humans and Neanderthals grew to be about the same size, little is known about whether the two species' brains produced different numbers of neurons. In fact, it seems as though the modern human brain was ignited by a sudden spark rather than merely because of a greater encephalization quotient. Thus, our ancestors' intelligence suddenly increased as a result of a significant genetic mutation that occurred relatively recently, increasing the density of neurons in our brains. According to researchers, this mutation significantly increased the number of brain cells in modern humans, giving them a cognitive advantage over their big-headed Neanderthal relatives. It appears as though this mutation occurred in the modern human brain. But for some reason the evidence indicates that this mutation did not occur in the brains of our Neanderthal brothers and sisters. The question is, what caused this mutation to occur in the first place? Morphological studies of skulls suggest that ancient Australian and Cro-Magnons were closely related, both having descended from a population that was widespread in South Asia 50,000 years ago. The Cro-Magnon has the largest cranial capacity of any evolutionary species of humans. Thus, they are thought to have been more intelligent than modern man. The brain capacity was approximately 1,660 cubic centimetres, larger than the average for modern human males. This is based on the average capacity of two Cro-Magnon skulls measured at 1,730 and 1,590 cubic centimetres respectively, and means that they had larger brains than their European precursors, the Neanderthals. The larger skull belonged to a man whose skeleton is known as Cro-Magnon I, one of four adults found in the cave in France, and scientists estimate his age at death at 40 to 50 years old. In fact, the earliest Cro-Magnon specimens exhibit some features that are reminiscent of those found in both Neanderthals and ancient Australians. 
The Cro-Magnons were anatomically similar to present-day Europeans, but were more robust, having larger brains, broader faces, more prominent brow ridges, and bigger teeth. While the Cro-Magnon remains are representatives of one of the earliest anatomically modern human beings to appear on Earth, the skull of Cro-Magnon had a larger forehead, well-developed chin, and rounder face than their ancestors such as the Skull and Kafsa humans of the Levant. Indeed, the skull of Cro-Magnon one shows traits that are unique to modern humans. A large brow ridge no longer tops the eye sockets, and there is no prominent prognathism of the face and jaw. The Cro-Magnon cave revealed the remains of four adult skeletons, one infant, and some fragmentary bones. The condition and placement of ornaments, including pieces of shell and animal teeth fashioned into what appear to be pendants or necklaces, led researchers to believe the skeletons had been intentionally buried within the shelter in a single grave. The site was one of the first to establish the ancient roots of modern humans, and fossils from this shelter represent some of the oldest Homo sapiens populations of Europe. Analysis of the skeletons found at the rock shelter indicates that the humans of this time period led a physically tough life. In addition, several of the individuals found at the Crow Magnon rock shelter had fused vertebrae in their necks, indicating traumatic injury, and the adult female found at the shelter had survived for some time with a skull fracture. From the high quality of their art, it is clear that Cro-Magnons were not primitive humans, but had previously experimented with artistic mediums and forms. Decorated tools and weapons show that they appreciated art for aesthetic purposes as well as for religious reasons. The Cro-Magnon arsenal included spears, spear-throwers, harpoons, and throwing sticks. Cro-Magnons crafted spear points using predominantly bone and antler, possibly because these materials were readily abundant. Compared to stone, these materials are compressive, making them fairly shatterproof. These spearheads were then hafted onto a shaft to be used as javelins. At some point in time, Cro-Magnons domesticated the dog, probably as a result of a symbiotic hunting relationship. DNA evidence suggests that present-day dogs split from wolves around the beginning of the last glacial maximum. However, potential Paleolithic dog remains have been found preceding this, namely the 36,000-year-old dog from Goyet Cave in Belgium and the 33,000-year-old dog from central Siberia, which could indicate there were multiple attempts at domesticating European wolves. Most Cro-Magnon remains have been purposefully buried, in which case the bodies were covered in ochre and accompanied by items put into the tomb. This points to a belief in an afterlife and shows proof of ceremonial activity and contact with the dead. An old Cro-Magnon man buried at the site of Sungir in Russia had one of the most adorned funerals. Thousands of ivory beads and hundreds of arctic fox teeth sewed onto his clothes covered his skeleton. Studies of Cro-Magnon skeletons reveal that humans were living longer, probably to the age where they could be grandparents. This produced a social framework based on extended families whereby grandparents could assist in raising the children to a higher degree than in past times. Furthermore, these individuals were creating intricate relationships both inside their own social group and across several others. Meanwhile, mitochondrial DNA analysis places Cro-Magnons as the sister group to Upper Paleolithic East Asian groups, divergence occurring roughly 50,000 years ago. Earlier Cro-Magnons, on the other hand, did not seem to be ancestral to any present-day population, nor did they form any cohesive group in and of themselves, each representing either completely distinct genetic lineages, admixture between major lineages, or have highly divergent ancestry. Because of this, one study concluded that, beginning roughly 37,000 years ago, Cro-Magnons descended from a single founder population and were reproductively isolated from the rest of the world due to Ice Age conditions. Genetic evidence also suggests early modern humans interbred with Neanderthals. Genes in the present-day genome are estimated to have entered modern humans about 65,000 to 47,000 years ago, most likely in Southwest Asia. For example, a 40,000-year-old modern human from Romania was found to have had 6 to 9% Neanderthal DNA, indicating a Neanderthal ancestor up to four to six generations earlier, 
but this hybrid Romanian population does not appear to have made a substantial contribution to the genomes of later Europeans. Therefore, it is possible that interbreeding was common between Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons, but did not contribute to the present-day genome. Nonetheless, it seems Cro-Magnons in Western Europe did not have sex with Neanderthals. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, please check out our many other videos on paleoanthropology and leave a like and a comment. We appreciate your support and take care.